World health experts said today the Ebola outbreak in West Africa is out of control. And the head of the World Health Organization warned of what she called catastrophic consequences if it continues to deteriorate. And we begin here again tonight with the spread of this Ebola virus. It's devastating in the countries where it's breaking out. And of course, it can travel by air right along with an infected passenger. We learned today the first American to die in this Ebola outbreak was a diplomat, a man who flew while sick from Liberia to Nigeria. The disease is now officially out of control, and because of fear and people fleeing, the security situation in Western Africa is now dangerous. The disease is spreading. Civil unrest is growing. When the disease progresses, people get afraid. For the first time in history, doctors right here in the United States will battle the Ebola virus. The CDC will also be sending 50 disease detectives to Western Africa, where the death toll has soared to more than 700. In Liberia, empty streets on the capital. The military deployed as panic rises. Disinfectant sprayed in public places. Hand washing stations up outside supermarkets. Two Americans are set to come home from Liberia in the midst of the Ebola outbreak, and they will become the first cases treated here in the United States. As Marcy Gonzalez reports, the missionaries will be coming home one at a time. Today, this hospital in Atlanta preparing to treat the first Ebola patient ever in the U.S. One of the two Americans infected with the deadly virus in Liberia, now expected to head here to Emory University Hospital. Now in West Africa, where more than 700 people have already died from the virus, extra efforts are underway to stop the spread of Ebola. The CDC issuing a travel advisory, warning against non-essential travel to Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. Travelers at airports they are being screened for potential illness. People are scared. Why should America let people back in who have Ebola? Centers for Disease Control has designated El Paso as one of 20 quarantine stations for the Ebola virus. The Sun City is part of a comprehensive system designed to prevent the spread of the disease in the U.S. The biggest concern is at airports with international flights and ports of entry, which we have a lot of here in the borderland. It's a scary virus, definitely. Dr. Hector Ocaranza is the El Paso City County Health Authority, and he called Ebola, which has no cure, one of the most frightening viruses out there. This map shows the 20 quarantine stations designated across the country. Now, back to Obama's magic pen. He signed another executive order today, and this one is going to allow for the detention of Americans with respiratory illnesses. Now, of course, this is all coming on the wake of that Ebola scare. Well, Obama's amendment will allow for the detention of Americans who just display acute respiratory synd syndromes. The Centers for Disease Control already has measures in place for dealing with an outbreak of a communicable disease. It'll allow for the quarantine of well persons who do not show symptoms of the disease. So obviously, they are already prepping themselves to have the authority to quarantine Americans. So the U.S. missions in the affected areas have distributed messages to U.S. citizens regarding the Ebola attack and those missions are closely monitoring the situation. The U.S. missions in the affected areas have distributed messages to U.S. citizens regarding the Ebola attack. The health warning now out of Florida, where officials are sounding the alarm about a deadly bacteria that breeds in the water. It's already killed nine this year, and people with open wounds are being warned to stay out of the water. ABC's Matt Gutman has the story. Called Vibrio vulnificus, the bacteria struck silently but swiftly Monday, something that has public health officials here on high alert. I never heard that there was ever even a bacteria in the water. Henry Konitsky was crabbing with his wife along central Florida's intercoastal waterway when he was apparently infected. Toledo, Ohio coping with a major health threat after officials discovered toxins in the water supply. Tonight, the scramble for bottled water, the restaurants shut down and no word yet on when it will be safe to drink again. Tonight, a state of emergency declared in the Toledo area with more than 400,000 residents unable to drink or even boil their tap water. Panicked families lining up to get emergency supplies being trucked in from all over the state. 
Overnight, officials issuing an urgent notice after chemists found unacceptable levels of toxins in the water supply. Schools, restaurants and businesses across the city closed. More than 200 people have died of cholera in northern Cameroon over the past two months. Cameroon Health Ministry says that more than 1,500 people have been infected with the waterborne bacteria. Here's tonight about the Ebola outbreak right here in New York City. Doctors at Mount Sinai Hospital are performing tests on a patient who is showing possible symptoms of the virus. He's undergoing medical tests right now to determine the cause of his symptoms. Doctors trying to figure out if he has the Ebola virus. The patient told doctors he had recently traveled to a West African country where Ebola has been reported. In a statement, the hospital said all the necessary steps are being taken to ensure the safety of patients, visitors and staff. Now reaching out to the federal Homeland Security director for answers she says the president isn't giving. And to Texas now where we're learning exclusively about a new health threat coming from illegal border crossers. The Border Patrol now worried about a virus outbreak. They're seeing crossers with contagious infections and sources tell me right now all that's separating the sick from the healthy, this caution tape and agents tell me that's not enough. We're sending people everywhere and the average person, the average citizen doesn't realize what's going on down here. A lot of people are very frustrated, especially people who are working inside the camps. Of course, they tell me that uh, the government says if you speak out, if you tell people what's really happening here, you're not only going to be fired, but we're going to throw you in jail, too. So there is a significant threat there. And uh, people are really wondering, well, wait a second, they're, they're not letting congressmen in. Uh, they're telling people you're going to be fired if you speak out. And now they're not even letting pastors in. And folks are wondering what the heck is going on in those government controlled camps that they don't want us to know about. Department of Homeland Security is essentially putting up another giant detention center. They're calling it an immigration holding cell, and they're expected to hold up to a thousand kids 72 hour increments at a time and release them by bus into different parts of the country unknown. And behind me too, if you see, there's a brown bus. It is a giant FEMA bus. What's happening to our country right now is mind blowing in McAllen, Texas. A News Channel 13 crew was threatened with arrest today. It happened as they were working on a story about the historic cottage in Wilton where President Ulysses S. Grant spent his final days. Grant's cottage is located on Mount McGregor near the now closed correctional facility. Corrections employees who are still working at the empty prison made every attempt to stop Mark Mulholland from doing his job. More than 20 years in the business, I've rarely encountered anything quite like this. We were doing a story on Grant's cottage, but some corrections employees made their actions the story. We were doing a piece on camera in the shadows of the empty Mount McGregor Let's prison when a car comes speeding toward us. Oh hey, someone's going fast, watch that. This is the exchange photographer Matt Soriano and I had with a man who identified himself as a corrections lieutenant. Excuse me. Yeah. No filming. We're doing a story about Grant's Cottage. It doesn't matter, you're not you're on state property right now. You can't film here. You gotta get the permission through Albany to film. Okay, we can we can go shoot it from Grant's Cottage then. No, you're not up here for that. You're up here for different purposes. We're doing a story on Grant's Cottage as it relates well, to the prison Well, you'll have to take closing. that through Albany. No, we'll just go back to Grant's Cottage and shoot it. No, you're going to leave the mountain now. No, we're going to go to Grant's Cottage. No, you you're can, not. You're rolling, right? Look, I'm not going to go around with you on this. You're going to leave okay. the property. We will. We'll go up to the historic site. You cannot film up there. You know what? Jeff, make sure they don't go up and call the state police and have them removed. Have us removed from a historic site, sir? So we proceeded to make our way closer to Grant's cottage, but another corrections employee parked his car across the road, denying and blocking our access to the historic site. On our way back down the mountain as we attempted to leave, corrections Lieutenant Doran had called the state police, asked them to detain us, and demanded our video. The story sounds like a piece of fiction. Six federal agents storm a woman's home to take her SUV. The reason? It might pollute the earth? Joining us right now is that woman, Jennifer Brinkley. Jennifer, tell, set yeah. the scene for us because I want people out there to understand that I'm telling a true story. I know, it's sad. I, um, I have a Land Rover and um, it was parked in our carport and six law enforcement agencies, um, vehicles and Homeland Security pulled up and asked me if I had a Land Rover and seized it. 
They took basically. it from your house. What reason did they give you? Um, they weren't sure because the, the case was sealed at that point. And the people that showed up, they were DHS? D yes, yes, and, and local law enforcement. I'm in disbelief because it's gone and I'm, I'm surprised that somebody can come in and take your property. Surprised? I think that we lived. It's outrageous. Yes, and you, you, know, you were outrageous. quoted as saying that you, know, you always felt so, pride to, so proud to be in this country. Your dad's a veteran. If so we could live in a free country. And um, I think that was the saddest thing for me because I realized that everything my father fought for didn't right. exist anymore. So it's scary. It, it's scary. A veteran may lose his home because of a fight with his homeowners association over his American flag. Larry Murphy has been at odds with his HOA for more than two years now after putting an American flag in one of his flower pots. As a result of fines, Murphy's owes the association $8,000. The HOA says if he doesn't pay up, they'll begin foreclosure proceedings on his home. I first moved here, I loved it. It was wonderful but it's just gotten where I nitpick more and more. It's a lot of friends and neighbors moving out. Santee Man is being told that he can't display the American flag inside his apartment window. He contacted 10 News after he said his apartment management refused to tell him why. You can't tell someone what they can't have displayed inside their own place. And of all things, the American flag, really, in America? Local war veteran builds furniture in his garage and gives it to military families in need. Now he could be forced to shut down the saws. Here I am, a Vietnam veteran doing something for the military, building furniture and donating it, and Lake of the Pines wants to close me down. The Homeowners Association is telling that vet to close up shop. He's been building furniture out of his garage for more than a decade and then donating it to military families in need. But now his homeowners association is telling him to stop. And I may not paint, sand, cut wood, or screw on the property. The new mandate cuts deep. Dennis Coker has been building cabinets and dressers for a decade, donating most of them to military family. We tried to get answers from the Lake of the Pines general manager, but he would not comment. A new law in Minnesota is dividing the public health community. The law allows blood samples from newborn babies to be kept indefinitely without their parents' consent. One other thing we need to understand is Minnesota is not leading the nation on August 1st by enacting this law, but these laws are in place all over the country, which is why this whole incident as a lawyer, this particular law, became shocking to me. So if I'm a parent, what should I be worried about if they're using this information? Well, I think that what we look at in these, these days of the NSA and all of the objections around the country that people have had about looking at uh, their phone records, listening to their phone calls, that people have gone up in arms about their privacy. So aren't we really worried, even though we're told the government won't do it? Aren't we worried that this data is identifiable and at some day may be used for purposes we don't know about? We're going to begin with the latest on the breaking news out of Armada where police are stopping cars, every car coming in and out of that little town. We've got something going on here in Armada that we haven't seen before. We have FBI agents and local police that are stopping everyone coming in or out of the town right now, out of this village. They're questioning everybody coming in and out about the investigation and they're also putting X's on everybody hand so they can keep track of who they've talked to who's come in and out of the town. I've never seen anything quite like this before and you wonder if they're just looking at driver's licenses or what, but we'll continue to follow this story. I did have a chance to speak to some of these drivers that were being questioned by police and they were telling me that they were having these black marks put on their hands, they were having their license plates taken down so uh, the FBI and the local police can keep track of everybody that's coming in and out of town here. Nine video has surfaced of another officer placing a suspect in a chokehold. On July 14th, police struggled to arrest 22-year-old Ronald Johns at the Lexington Avenue and 125th Street subway station. You could see an arm around the suspect's neck and punches being thrown. Johns was charged with fair evasion, resisting arrest, and trespass. The two officers say they were injured in the struggle. Both are on medical leave. Police Internal Affairs is investigating. Really? 
It's a video that is spreading across social media. A man in a wheelchair appears to be getting roughed up by police. Taylor was combative, refused to leave the cruiser, and had to be forced into a wheelchair. The video is clear as day. I saw everything with my own eyes. He did not touch an officer. He did not bite at an officer. He did not kick an officer. And while he was in handcuffs, police tased him three times. While police and security restrained Taylor, a guard realized Richard was recording the entire ordeal. But Charlie Langton says security may have overstepped their bounds by putting their hands on Richard. I'm an Army vet. I fought for being able to do what, exactly what I was doing, and it was completely uncalled for. We've been seeing a lot more of these videos where it appears that police officers and security guards are abusing their authority. The latest example, obviously, here. Fresh clashes have flared up on the Libyan Tunisian border, forcing guards to open fire. ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, is on the march again. ISIS has declared itself um, the, a caliphate. Their leaders have declared himself a caliph, and they're talking about world domination. Should we take these guys seriously? The United Nations says the latest takeovers of territory by ISIS have displaced 200,000 people. Russia has announced it's carrying out new military exercises close to the border with Ukraine. More than 100 bombers and fighter jets will take part in the maneuvers throughout the week in Russia's central and western regions. Israel has announced that it's calling up more reserves as the fighting with Hamas intensifies. Palestinian officials say another U.N. school came under attack in Gaza overnight. More families who fled their homes have been displaced once again. Wasn't weather that forced that flight to land. There is plenty of extreme weather tonight. In some western states, wildfires are flaring up again thanks to lightning and that historic drought. 